Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing well. So today it is one of the first days of Wilsathon and I'm here to talk about the Lottie Project. As I've said in previous videos, I always thought that this was probably my favourite of Jacqueline Wilson's books. So I was really, really delighted to get a chance to reread this, re-explore this story and see if it still holds up. The Lottie Project was originally published in 1997 and tells the story of young Charlotte Enright. If I'm remembering rightly, her full name is Charlotte Alice Catherine Enright, or Cake as a lot of people like to call her. She lives with her single mother Jo who had her when she was very young. Jo's parents didn't approve of her having a child so young so she doesn't live with them anymore and they'd kind of been bouncing from like council estate to council estate till finally Jo worked her way up to becoming a manager at a store and now they're able to afford a mortgage on a flat. And the story follows Charlie mainly as she's just going about her life, going to school, but we meet her at a moment where things are starting to change. The first major disruption to her life happens when a new teacher arrives at school. A new teacher, Miss Beckworth, arrives to take over from her previous teacher who'd gone on maternity leave and Miss Beckworth is a pretty strict teacher. She's very no-nonsense, she doesn't put up with any sort of shenanigans in her classroom, immediately uprooting everybody by putting the entire class into alphabetical order, which means that Charlie has to sit next to Jamie Edwards who is her least favourite person because she sees him as being a bit of a swat. For my Americans out there who have never heard of a swat, that is basically what we would call a geek or a nerd. Charlie also likes to make fun of Jamie because she sees him as being a bit of a posh boy, a bit of a teacher's pet, and she decides immediately that she does not like this new teacher. At the same time, she finds out from her mother Jo that Jo has been made redundant. So Jo is now panicking, scrambling around, trying to find some money so that the two of them can afford to live in their apartment. She manages to get three separate jobs, working as a cleaner and then as a nanny. Coincidentally, at the same time, Miss Beckworth sets the class a challenge, a little history project to work on, in which they have to create a project all to do with the Victorians. Charlie is initially pretty disinterested in this, but then she discovers a book about Victorian domestic servants and finds a girl who looks eerily similar to her, at definitely a similar age and she's kind of shocked at this idea that somebody as young as 11 would have to go out to work and to look after other children especially when Charlie sees herself still as a child herself. She then decides to do a slightly different kind of project and instead decides to write a diary from the perspective of a young girl called Lottie who has to raise money for her family and therefore becomes a servant. And very quickly we get to see how Charlie gets a lot of comfort out of writing Lottie's diary and also how Lottie's diaries start to reflect Charlie's own life and really kind of giving the reader a chance to see how the people in the past were not so different from us. So you can probably see how this book initially appealed to me, you know, it's about a main character who's called Charlotte, even though she doesn't like to be called Charlotte, she prefers to be called Charlie, and side note, yes I definitely try to get people to call me Charlie. Did not get any success there. <laughs> Though my dad does still call me Lottie, but he is the only person who's allowed to do that. And through the book she discovers a love of history, which I can relate to. <laughs> and like I say, I really love the fact that through this book you're getting a chance to compare and contrast the past and the present. Getting to see the similar similarities and the differences between how people live now and how they lived in the past. We see how Charlie gets a lot of comfort in seeing how the past that she is writing kind of mirrors her own life. And as an adult it made me really think about, you know, why is it that we turn to the past a lot of the time? Why is it that a lot of people get comfort from reading about the past? And I feel like that's especially poignant right now, I feel like a lot of people have turned to the past to kind of explain the past year or so. And I think the reason for it is that people do get a lot of comfort from being reminded that people have gone through the same kind of trials as we're going through now before and they've gotten through them. However, there's always a bit of a danger there with romanticising the past. And I feel like that's something that Charlie kind of leans into. Initially, Lottie's diaries are kind of escapism for Charlie. Initially, she makes Lottie kind of the perfect girl, the girl that Charlie maybe wishes that she was. She's an A-star student and her teacher loves her, which is definitely not true for Charlie in this book. But as she delves further through the story, she starts to see Lottie as a more three-dimensional character. And we see how Lottie doesn't always have everything to together. Something that Jacqueline Wilson kind of draws our attention to is the way in which there is often a lack of interest in the poorer people throughout history. There's so much focus on royals and nobles throughout history and I've definitely played a part in that, you know, I am doing my Penguin Monarch series, but Charlie is initially interested in the people who are just like her and she's kind of amazed that there are only two pages in one of the books that Miss Beckworth gives to her about the Victorian poor. And that's something that unfortunately we are still grappling with because there is such a lack of evidence for those poorer people of the past. Even though obviously they made up such a larger percentage of Victorian life and Victorian people than those wealthy people. And we see how Charlie's really annoyed that she can't find that representation for people who were just like her in the past, so she writes it herself. Following on from that, another thing that I really love about this book is how it kind of plays with class differences, both in the past and in the present. I think it's something I probably didn't pick up on much as a child, but you know, 
class is all over this book. The fact that she's forced to sit next to Jamie Edwards, who she doesn't particularly like, and one of the reasons she doesn't particularly like him is because he is very visibly much more wealthy than she is. He comes from a much more privileged family. We know because Charlie tells us that she and Joe are much less well off than the rest of her friends even. She goes around to her friend Lisa's house and her mother expresses like absolute horror at the fact that Joe doesn't own a blender to make cakes with. Lisa's mother not even considering that that could be a thing. Charlie's grandparents are often casting aspersions on Joe's home and the places that she chooses to live. There's a lot of class snobbery that Jacqueline Wilson's really trying to tackle here. But we also see how Charlie has her own misconceptions about class, thinking that Jamie Edwards is just like this stuck up posh boy. And you know, in a lot of ways he is, but that's because he's a child and he doesn't know better. Actually, when the two of them get to know each other, they actually quite like each other. She goes around to Jamie's house and she's expecting his parents to be absolutely awful and to be kind of like sticking their noses up at her. And they're not at all, they're just like regular parents. Another thing that I love about the Lottie Project is that we are presented with a flawed main character. Because here's the thing about Charlie, she's often kind of rude and often a bit mean. She's often like very full of herself, particularly about her popularity and how much other people love her. But at the same time, she's also very resourceful and very witty. And those are aspects of her personality that you love. Jamie Edwards at one point even calls her fierce, which I think to see, especially if you are a young girl, is it's really good representation because often in previous children's books, you know, like little girls had to be like the most perfect demure people. And Charlie is not that at all. And a large part of the story is driven by the fact that she has to to learn the difference between, you know, being strong and fierce, but also being mean and where she kind of crosses the line in that sometimes. But I feel like through this story, Jacqueline Wilson is also commenting on how Charlie is not just mean because she's a terrible person, she's often misbehaving in order to cover up insecurities and she often lies to cover up her insecurities. Not only does Charlie feel like a very real flawed character, but also what is nice in this is to see a mother, a parent, who feels very real and not like a parent stock character. She doesn't always have everything together, she kind of gets into a bit of a flap sometimes. And she doesn't always get it right, but she is definitely a parent who's trying to do her best. And because she was so young when she had Charlie, she's kind of got like a bit of that Lorelai Gilmore effect where she's kind of trying to find the line between being her daughter's friend, but also her mother, her disciplinarian. And she doesn't always get there, but she you see that she is trying. And then finally the character of Miss Beckworth, who I would also say is quite a three-dimensional teacher character. She comes across at the beginning as being this very strict authoritarian teacher. But I think you do see very early on that she's also quite funny. You just kind of have to be on the right side of her and we've all had teachers like that. But when push comes to shove, she does definitely care about her students. And there's a great moment towards the end of this where she really comes into her own and really takes care of Charlie. And also something that Hilariously, I, I think I only really picked up in this because of Les Mis. Yes, Les Mis is helping me with my reading of Jacqueline Wilson books, mm -hmm, that seems right. Is that this book seems to have a lot to say about names and the power of names, the power of somebody else's name for you. Right at the beginning, we are told by Charlie that she doesn't like to be called Charlotte. And immediately upon entering her class, Miss Beckworth, in wanting to show her authority, decides that she is going to call her Charlotte because that's the way that we do things in our class. And yes, it made me think of Jean Valjean and all of his different names and the names that he likes and the names that he doesn't like and the names that people choose to put upon him and how that is indicative of the respect that they have for him. Maybe it's a very, very loose connection, but I definitely got aspects of that in here. I can't believe I'm comparing Les Mis to Lottie Project. But yeah, those are my very jumbled up thoughts about the Lottie Project and why I like it. I will just say there are definitely aspects of this that are very 1997. It's not a frequent thing, but it does crop up a few times. There is some language in here that is very, very of the 90s, very dated that we wouldn't use today. Hello, editing Charlotte here because I realized I wasn't really clear on, and I was a bit vague. Basically at one point in the book, the main character Charlie uses the R word to describe herself in a very flippant way to describe herself in an argument. I just thought I should flag it up. I know the argument is probably gonna be like in the 90s and the early 2000s, people did use that word and there wasn't as much awareness about not using that word. I was a teenager in the noughties, I definitely heard people use that word, but I did still feel like it was something that I should potentially flag up for people. But generally I do think that this book has held up over the years and I did really enjoy reading it. Do let me know how you're getting on with Will Sathon, I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks!